Wednesday nights get revved up with our new primetime lineup starting at 8 Eastern on Speed. The Jayhawk and its crew must operate properly to successfully navigate through the high winds. If they should lose power or focus, even for a moment, the bird can be taken down. Every day that I fly on it, it still amazes me when you, when you see one of these aircraft hover. It, it doesn't look like it should work. Unlike a fixed-wing aircraft that has separate thrust and control surfaces, the Jayhawk combines these into one unit. Two turboshaft engines provide power and drive a transmission which turns the rotor head. By changing the pitch or angle of the rotor blades, the pilot can control the direction of the rotor thrust, causing the Jayhawk to go forward, backwards, climb, hover, or descend. In the cockpit, Lieutenant Catherine Gross operates three separate flight controls, giving the aircraft extreme maneuverability. The cyclic tilts the helicopter and determines broad directional movement. The collective determines altitude and sets the hover, while foot pedals turn the nose of the Jayhawk by changing the angles of the tail rotors. High in the Sierra Nevadas, the Tahoe Nordic Rescue Team is on board the LMC Snowcat climbing over deep drifts and maneuvering around dangerous obstacles en route to a lost hiker. I've never ran into a situation with this cat where it could not maneuver the way I wanted it to. The snow cat must be able to stop, turn, and maneuver, all while staying afloat in up to 10 feet of snow. It's very responsive, and as you're moving downhill, when you need it to correct or you need it to move from one side to the other, it doesn't take a lot to make it happen. Like the Jayhawk, the Snowcat employs a simple yet effective way to maneuver. More or less, if you want to turn left, you pull back on the left track brake. If you want to turn right, you pull back on the right track brake. Band brakes on each rear axle are tightened as the steering levers are operated. These brakes disengage the track from the driveline, and the vehicle turns using one set of skids at a time. You can turn this thing on a dime and make this thing get through some very tight spaces. As the Jayhawk hovers above the victim, flight mechanic Lieutenant Travis McGregor is now the one in charge. The two pilots are blind to what's under the helicopter, totally relying on the flight mechanic. His head's out the door, and he's going to give conning commands. Easy back, easy back, hold, hold, easy right. Travis, attached to a gunner's belt, leans out into nature's fury. I'm getting the ocean spray right up on me. Depending on wind conditions, sometimes the rotor wash is directly below me, and the salt spray is, is coming in the door. My helmet visor and my, my gloves, everything's covered in salt water. Just overhead is the key to every Jayhawk rescue at sea. The most important piece of equipment on the aircraft to affect the rescue is the rescue hoist. I have uh, 200, 200 feet of usable cable, and I control it with this. It's the uh, hoist pennant. Zero to 250 feet a minute variable. A lot can go wrong and then making sure I don't tangle the, uh, the hoist cable around anyone or anything. A rescue swimmer begins his dangerous descent to the victim. The power that makes the Jayhawk so effective as a stable airborne rescue platform now works against the swimmer and the victim. The aircraft rotor walk can be as much as uh, 70 or 80 miles an hour. We actually generate waves down on the surface of the water as well. Correct positioning of the helicopter is paramount to a safe rescue. The crew aims to be within 20 to 40 feet of the surface to not only reduce the amount of cable in the air, but to allow the prop blast to cancel out potentially dangerous horizontal winds. But this also means the whirling prop is closer to the water. Conditions down there for the rescue swimmer are very, very challenging. The pilots and the flight mechanic have to be aware of where we position the aircraft relative to the, the rotor wash so that we don't make things more difficult for a survivor maybe that's barely staying afloat or a, a vessel that may be very close to sinking or capsizing. The victim is in the basket and being winched towards the door. I can use both arms to pull the basket, swimmer and survivor, into the aircraft while simultaneously uh, adjusting the rocker switch. With everyone aboard and the cable stowed, their rescue mission is now considered a success. The Jayhawk and the Falcon head for home. 